Let's make this project left-handed. I love my new design. This is a Catherine's Wheel Infinity Scarf slash Cowl. Let's make it. Ciao friends, Beth with Thimblehooks and today's little project is my Catherine's Wheel Infinity Scarf Cowl, whatever you want to call it, hood. It's tall enough to come all the way over your head if you want it to have a hood. Otherwise, it's just nice and bulky right here for a cowl or an infinity scarf effect. And so let's make it. This one that I'm showing you right here used two skeins of Lion Brand Cupcake. And this one, I believe, is, yes, it is apple picking. Just love these colors. They're all great. I had two skeins of this, and I separated all the colors out. So I forced these rows to happen. This is how much I have left of all these different colors. Some of them, there's barely any color left because the rounds are very small. In here like this middle green, there's a green and there's a teal and then in between there's kind of a, like an apple-y green right here. And that's very short. So I needed to have the yarn from both skeins in order to make this one happen. But that's how much I have left. So I'll make something fun out of that, I guess. But I used two with a bunch of leftovers to make something else a different day. So we're going to set this guy over here. And we're going to get started. I'm actually going to use, not that one, I'm going to use Pot of Gold this time because I already had one of these pulled apart for a different project that I made something for my daughter over Christmas. I don't remember what it was, but she wanted a, a couple of these specific colors, so I have these ones left over. So we're going to do our forced rows right here. Start at the bottom right here. This is the bottom. And the top is scalloped like this. It's so cute. I just love the Catherine's wheel. Such a great stitch. So we will get started. I am just going to show you a little bit. I'm not going to do the whole scarf. That you'll get the idea. For this infinity scarf, we are going to make a big rectangle and then we'll finish it together with the seam in the back. And for this project, you would chain. Um, my Catherine's wheel is multiples of 10 plus 6 plus 1. So this project calls for chaining a starting chain of 107. So it's 10 times 10 plus 6 plus 1. I am going to do 27. Just so everybody can get the hang of what I'm doing here. So 1, 2, 26, and 27. So that's 2 reps of 10 plus 6 plus 1. Now we want to turn it over and we always work in these little back bumps right here so we get a nice clean edge, get a nice finished edge. So we are going to just do a single crochet in each one of these little back bumps for a total of 26 all the way back down to the beginning. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Whoopsie. This is a six millimeter hook. Even though um, Cupcake wants a five, I believe. Cupcake suggests a five, but I'm using a six so that it's a little bit more stretchy and a little bit more flowy. So here we go. Back bump, single crochets, all the way back down to the beginning. Just my last couple of stitches. My single crochets in the back bumps of our original chains. 27 chains equals 26 single crochets in the back bumps. Now remember for this pattern you'd have start with a, a chain of 107 so you'd end up with 20, 106 of these. So it'd be much longer. This project is way easier than it seems. Catherine's wheel is not scary. I'm going to step you right through it. It's really really easy. I do have a tutorial. I do have a tutorial for um, Catherine's wheel kind of my way. I have a little bit of a twist on it and it's become one of my favorite stitches now that I've fixed a couple of things that I didn't care for. 
in the first place, but now I just love it and it really is easy, I promise. So we're going to go through it together. The base right here that I use, just to give it a little bit of stability, to give it a little bit more flowiness here, I use five rows of herringbone double crochet. See, it gives it a little bit of a pucker, it gives it a little bit more more flowiness to it just at the bottom because we're not going to see all of these Catherine's wheel when it's at the bottom of your shirt or at the bottom of your neck. So now we're going to do this. So I'm going to chain one and we'll turn our work and we're going to double we're going to do a herringbone double crochet. So that's a yarn over. Go through that very first stitch come through and it's a slip stitch through the first stitch or for the for, through the first loop and a slip stitch through that second loop and now you finish your double crochet. Let's do that again. So it's a yarn over, go through the next stitch, pull through, slip under the first loop, pull through the second loop and they'll pull through two loops. Do one more time pull through and go straight through slip stitch under the first loop, pull through the second loop and now pull through the last two. Pull through, slip stitch, go through the first stitch or the first loop and there you go. Pull over, through, through, and through. Yarn over, pull through, through, and through. So there's three steps. Yarn over through the stitch, under here, through here, and through here. all the way to the end. So you'll end up with 26 herringbone double crochets. And I'll meet you at the end and we'll turn the row. There we go. See how they kind of angled themselves off just a little bit. It's really fun. Right in here. And now to turn, it's easy. Chain one and turn and do the same thing again. Yarn over through, under the first loop, through the first loop, through the, and through two. So under the first loop, through the second loop, and through two. Under the first, through the second, and through both. So what you end up with is this little zigzag pattern. It goes like this. Zig, 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 zig. You can follow it right there. Just cute. It's a little flowy. It's a little bit, a little bit stretchy. It's a little bit bulky. So we do that total of five rows. So that was the first one. We just turned the corner to the second row. I'll meet you at the end when we have five. I just my last. These are my last two herringbone double crochets. So yarn over through the last stitch. Pull through the under the first loop, through the second loop, through two, and here's my last one. Under the first loop, through the second loop, and then through two. So there we go. Now we have this little base done right here. And we can start in on the really cool looking Catherine's Catherine's wheel stitch. And using the same color that you started with. I'll force these other rows, but I like to start right here with the same color that's down here so there's a nice transition. We're going to chain one, turn our work, and in the first two stitches, right here, the very first stitch is a single crochet, and the second stitch is a single crochet. Boom. We're going to skip three. One, 
two, three, and in this fourth stitch right here, we're going to do seven double crochets in that same stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. They're just making a bit of a fan right here. It's actually the top of a wheel, but that's how we start. And we're going to skip three again. So you skip three on either side of our first fan. So skip three, one, two, three. And in this fourth, we're going to do a single crochet. And in the next one is a single crochet. And in the next one is a single crochet. So we skipped three and then did three single crochets. And now we're going to skip three again. One, two, three. And in this fourth one is seven double crochets. And that is the sequence that will happen all the way across. And I'll meet you at the end. Skip three, three single crochets, skip three. I'll meet you at the end. All right, so we're gonna, we have our last four stitches. We're going to skip one, two, and three. And in this very last stitch, instead of seven, we're only going to do four. Four double crochets instead of seven because we're at the edge. One, two, three, and four. Isn't that so cute? There's the top of a wheel, just like right here. So it was seven here, and then there's a skip three. There's three single crochets, a skip three, seven, skip three. It's a very easy sequence to get in your head. And then you move on to the next round, or the next row. So we're going to chain one. And my little twist on doing a Catherine's wheel is that I do one single crochet down every stitch before I change colors because I just don't like how skinny some of these things look with color changes. It just doesn't look as nice to me. So I, I'm very happy with this. So we're just going to do single crochet all the way down. There'll be a total of 26. Single crochets all the way down. And here's my last two single crochets. And the very last one, we're going to change colors now. So the very last one, we're not going to complete the stitch. We're going to do our yarn over and pull through. We're just change colors. And in my cupcake, I started out with this color green, with the olivey green. So we're going to go into this next one, which is, it's got speckles. It's kind of a white off-white with some, a few of the speckles of everything, so I thought that would be cute. We're just going to keep following the sequence. All right, so to com and completing this stitch with the new color, all you have to do is pull through. That stitch is done. I'm going to chain one and turn our work, and again do a single crochet in every stitch all the way back down to the other end my last single crochet for that row. It's just a nice transition. It's fun. Now if you want to, you can trim this one off. You're going to end up with a lot of little tail ends all the way up one side. So we can snip off the original green if you want to make it go away. Or you can do all of that later. It doesn't really matter. All right, now we're going to start. We'll be right in here. We just did a, a row of single crochets. Now we're going to do the bottom part of the wheel. 
So this row is the bottom part of the wheel. Chain one and turn our work. The first two, get a single crochet. Going to chain three, one, two, and three. And then we have to double crochet seven together. So the next seven stitches are all going to be bunched together. So I'll show you how you do that. We chained our three, go into the next stitch, yarn over, go through that stitch and pull through. Go under two loops, but don't finish your double crochet. Do that six more times. Over, pull through two. Go under yarn over, go through, pull up, go through the first two. And the easiest way to check to make sure that you have enough is that there should be eight loops on your hook because you did seven stitches, but you already had a loop on your hook, and I only have seven, so I have to do one more. Yarn over, pull through, pull through the first two. Now that I have eight loops on my hook, we are going to yarn over and pull through all of them. So pull through all, made a little fan and gathered them all together. Chain one, and then right in here, we're going to do a slip stitch. Slip stitch right here and slip stitch into this last, the, the base stitch of your last double crochet for this fan. There. <laughs> I'll show you that again. It closes up this little hole that is so pronounced right in here on Catherine's wheel. I don't like that little hole. Seems to kind of defeat the purpose of making something that's supposed to keep you warm if there's a big hole in it. So I fixed it. So then we get to jump straight into this next stitch and single crochet three times. Once, twice, and three. The next three get a single crochet each. Chain three again for the repeat from the beginning. Now we're going to double crochet seven together. Yarn over, pull through, go through two, two loops on my hook. Let's make sure we have eight loops on our hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yay! So we just yarn over and pull through all of them. Chain one right in this top stitch right here. Do a slip and a slip into that stitch that we did our last double crochet in. We're going to go to the next Immediately next stitch is a single crochet, one, single crochet number two, and single crochet number three. Now we're going to chain three again, just like we did after every other set of three single crochets. But at the very end here we are going to double crochet four together instead of seven. So let's yarn over, go through here, pull through two, Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So now we have five loops on our hook. We had a loop on our hook already and then we did four partial double crochets. So come through here, through all of them and gather them together again, and a chain. So there's the bottom right here, the bottom of this next set of wheels. So easy. Next round is chain two. So we chained one to close this off. Now we're going to chain one more and turn our work. So the 
a total of two chains there. Our first chain with, that closed up this little fan, we want to do four double crochets in that chain. Sometimes it's a little squiggly to get in there, but we'll get in there. There's one, two. Now to close up our wheel, we're going to skip these, this chain three space and go right over here into each of the single crochets from the previous row. They get a single crochet again. One, two, and three. Now again, we want to work in the top of our of this wheel into the chain that closed up and gathered everything together. We want to put seven crochets into that little stitch. So hopefully you can see it right here. There. Right there. Seven double crochets into the chain that closed up the bottom half of the wheel. So there's one, two, and seven. So there's the top half of this wheel. Same as this, right in here. Right here. Just like we're going to skip over these three chains, single crochet into the other single crochets from the previous round. One, two, three. And again, double crochet seven times into the closing chain one that we did that gathered up the bottom part of the wheel. So we're making seven more spokes. One, two, There's the top half of that wheel. We skip over our chain three and the last stitches over here there's only two. There's not three like there has been through the center. There's only two so you need two single crochets at the very end. There's one and there's number two. There's our wheel. Close them all up. So now to finish off this color, we're already done with that second color, just chain one and do a single crochet all the way back to the other side. One single crochet in every stitch to make a nice finished edge for this color. Color number two. And here's the last few stitches. And don't forget this last one right here. There's number 26. So we'll make sure you have 26 along the way. Okay, now we're going to change colors. So actually we're going to pull this back out. There we complete the stitch. I want a single crochet, turn our work, and again, single crochet all the way down. So you'll have 26 with our new color. Makes a nice transition edge. Single crochet all the way down. You will have 26. And 26. So, of course, if you're making this, this is just a swatch. If you're making this, you'd have 106. This is 26, just so I can show you how each corner or each row lines up. So this is our third color. Nice transition with our single crochets. Chain two and turn our work. And we're going to double crochet the next four stitches or the first four stitches together. So in the very first stitch right here start here, double crochet two together, or four together right there. And there's the second one. There's number three and number four. 
So I have five loops on my hook. Go through all of them. Chain one to close, a slip stitch on this edge, and a slip stitch in that bottom stitch. Go straight into the next three stitches with a single crochet each. One, two, three, and after those is a chain three. One, two, three. Sing or double crochet seven together again. Six and seven. We should have eight loops on our hook, and we do, so that's perfect. Yarn over, pull through everything, chain one to close the bottom of the wheel, slip stitch on the edge, and slip stitch in that bottom of that double crochet. The next three are single crochets. One, two, three. One in each. Chain three. And double crochet seven together again. And seven. So we have eight loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all of those loops, chain one to close it, slip stitch on the side, and a slip stitch in that stitch. Boom. Now the last two. Two stitches left right here. They each get a single crochet to finish off all the way to the edge. There. We did the bottom of now this one bottom right here. Show you how to do the top part and then everything turns into a repeat. So we're going to chain one and turn our work. Continuing on with our obnoxious fluorescent green. That's all awesome. The first two get a single crochet. One and two. And we are going to do seven double crochets into the chain one space that closed up the bottom of this wheel, which is right here. Seven double crochets in that same stitch. One, two, six, and seven. We jump over, skip all of these chains, and go right into the single crochets with a single crochet on the top of each one of them. One, two, and three. And again, seven double crochets into that closing, that closing stitch right here on top of the bottom part of the wheel, and we're going to put the top. Seven double crochets in that same stitch makes the top of the wheel. Skip our chain three space and go right over here to the single crochets and single crochet into each one. There's one and there's two and there's three. All right, now in our we're going to finish the top of the very last wheel, but this is only four double crochets, so we're going to go into its closing loop and do four because this is a half a wheel because it's on the edge. So we're going to do four double crochets in the top of that one as well. One, two, three, and four. So there's color number three. We're almost done. Chain one, turn our work, and a single crochet all the way down. There's the last few stitches of my third color. And I'm going to stop here. And you can see where I'm going with this. Down here is nice and drapey. Has a half a wheel, the top half of the wheel in that same color. And then each one of these rows I've forced into being its own color. I did a total of 12. So here's the base in the brown. 
right here. There's I called this is one because it did start with a little bit of orange, but I never used the orange. And so we started down with the brown right in here. This color right here. And then there's our third row. And I continued on and made four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. I ended on on the eleventh row of or eleventh, yeah, the eleventh row of my Catherine's wheel. And then we fold it together like that. And just slip stitch all of these together on the inside. So I'll show you what kind of a tangled mess you'll end up with on the inside. Oh no! Right, so you can see all of these tail ends right here. They're all on the same side. Tie them all in a knot, snip them close, weave them in however you want to, but it looks very chaotic on the inside right now because I have not snipped off all of my ends. So here we go. See the bottom here with the, with the uh, herringbone double crochet is nice and stretchy on the bottom and then this beautiful design with all of the forced color stripes all the way through. Nice and toasty warm. If you wanted to you can pull it up high enough to go all the way over your head and there's still plenty in the back. Keep you nice and warm if you want it to be taller. Just keep making more rounds and more rounds and more rounds. But there you go. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to my channel and stop back soon to see what I have come up with for next time. Thanks. See you later.